Hello! It is the second last day of February 2022 and my cross stitching, I've actually had a lot of time for it lately. So I've been able to work ahead a bit in my whip go goals and get a decent amount of pro progress done, which I'm kind of excited about and I'm happy to show you now. The first project I wanted to show you is my Chatelaine. I hadn't touched this in ages and I'll put a picture up wherever it ends up being um, to show you where I started at the beginning of February and I have the printed chart version because when I bought the chart I didn't have a tablet or anything um, with which to view the PDF so I've got the printed chart it's got a photo attached of the finished product but you know how it is, the photos are never quite the same as the real thing. So, I started with, as you've seen, basically part of the center motif. And I focused on that part. The thing that had made me stop working on it was the one over one stitches. I was concerned about those and didn't know if I could do them. But when it came up on my whip go, I figured, well, I'll try and I can always take it out. So here's the progress I made. I'll bring it closer to you in a second. There we go. As you can see, I did, should have brought clips. I'm gonna come a bit closer here. See if I can get some good light from the window. As you can see, these are the one over one stitches as well as this unfinished eagle here. And I'm not quite done. There's a little bit more to do in here. And then I was excited to get to the metallic, but I like to let's see what the light does here. Oh, that's even better. I like to finish all my regular floss stitching before I bring in any metallic because I find that if I'm um, stitching continuously next to metallic, it starts to make the regular floss fray. And especially since this is that um, silk, is that all the other flosses are silks, I um, yeah, didn't want them to get all messy looking. So I got this inner gold border done. And then I didn't want to leave it in an awkward spot and this sort of brown bit here, sort of the beginning of the outer frame of this center medallion. It's in a, a highly variegated floss and I wanted to make sure that I kind of kept the pattern going, I guess. I kept my variegation, you'll see here, I stitched back and forth like this. And then when I got here, I still stitched back and forward like this so that my variegation would all follow that same pattern. I'm not quite done all the back stitching on the cabin. That'll come yet. And then we've got these, I believe they're road stitches. I'll go even closer. I don't know if I can focus. There we go. We've got some road stitches. Here. Um, there's tiny ones there. And then there's that one. This spot is where a larger bead will go. I was really pleased with my progress and I think this chart comes up maybe one more time on my whip go and I'll, um, uh, I'm hoping I can maybe get this center medallion done by then, which would be really exciting. For now it's going back in the bag and I'll show you my other whip go project and then the two for March. Oh, in the meantime, I have one of these tiny little floss keepers. You can get these at craft stores. And I use it to keep all the specialty threads, the silks and so on. I bought my set from a European cross stitch company, which by the way, is an American company. And they create these packs. Their shipping times are quite long. And the reason for that is that it's financially impossible to keep all of these specialty threads 
in stock in sufficient numbers. Um, so what they do is they use their business relationships to put together the package and then they send it to you as soon as they have it. Um, of course, that also included italics and it included the most exciting part, the beads. There are delicas, there are some crystals, some larger crystals. I do like beading. It just changes the whole effect. But for now, Alpine Seasons Garden by Chatelaine is living in here. The next project I worked on, and this was actually a finish, and it didn't take me, it didn't take me the whole 10 days. My WIPCO goals are to work on um, the chosen projects for 10 days each, and I'm not too picky about what a day of stitching looks like. If I just get 10 minutes at the end of the day, that's fine. If I have a slow day on the weekend and I can stitch for six hours that day, that's a day too. Um, so I was actually able to fi finish this one before my 10 days were up. And what I did was I used my free days to work on Alpine Garden. But let's see if I can get the board behind it. This is the Alessandra Adelaide Christmas ball 2010, I think. And I'll have been showing you a picture here of what where I was at the beginning of February. And here's what it looks like finished. Sorry about that color difference at the bottom there. My board is only that big. So there it is, kind of the full effect. I'll put it down for a second to show you. I chose my own floss colors. I chose two weeks dye works. There's um, Louisiana hot sauce and Hunter. So I just chose them because they seemed like super Christmassy colors. And then I used, I believe the called for red um, mill held beads for the beading. And I'll just come a bit closer here for you. I love the gentle variegation in the red. That really showed up well. Okay, experiment time. You are sitting on my piano right now. I'm gonna see what happens if I turn on my piano light. A little bit, I don't know if that makes a difference. The green has variegation in it too, but it's quite subtle. I did iron this, but it's a linen. It takes a while for those fold marks to fall out. And I used a white thread to attach the beads. So if you look at an angle, you can see that those little white threads there but they don't really show there you go I'm really pleased with this one and I'm thinking about how I want to mount it I don't think I will frame it professionally or have it professionally framed just because money is a thing but um, I think this one will work really well for for me to mount and I just want to decide whether I want to do a circle or a square. You can see I had sewn some extra scrap fabric to make it play more nicely in the Q-snap. And I've left that on for now in case it comes in handy during framing, but it should come off easily enough if I need it to, or I can just cut it off if there's enough space there. But there's my finish for February. This was definitely one of those projects that felt like some projects have kind of natural mini achievement spots. So every time I would finish one of these swirls, it just it just was more motivating to get the next swirl and the next swirl and the next swirl. And when it came to backstitching, it was the same thing. What I did, I have a paper chart for this one. What I did was I took a photo, uploaded it to GoodNotes and then use that to highlight where I was done. It was a ton of fun, I have to say. I kept checking and double checking to try and make sure I didn't miss any of, especially the back stitched, back stitched swirls and beads. So I hope I got them all. But 
That was my Alessandra Adley. This chart was actually a gift from someone through Stitch Mania. I think she had asked for some simple translation and it took like a couple minutes to translate something, something on a chart for her. And, um, and I was happy to do it. And then she messaged me back and said, oh, you can pick a chart from this website. And I was not expecting that. That was such a, such a kind gesture, I thought. Um, Stitch Mania, if you're new to this floss tube internet side of um, cross stitching, Stitch Mania is now uh, a defunct uh, Facebook group. Um, it had, I want to say, tens of thousands of members. It was it was huge, so it was quite the quite the community. Now the next two pieces are my March Whipco pieces. Uh, because I finished my goals for February, I've already started on my March, and one of the Whipco calls on my bingo board, Whipco board, was a new start. And I wasn't really, I've been having so much fun making really good progress on old whips that I didn't really want to start something big. And I had this Mill Hill kit. Let me just get the package here. I had this Mill Hill kit and I had taken it um, to a friend's house and done just a very, sorry about the rattling moving the beading needle to the back of the picture. Um, I had had a very small start, so I decided that would count as my new start. So this is the Celtic Santa's Whale Santa. And there's the package. And I'll have a picture up as well of where I was when I started the month. Normally that would be a blank piece of fabric for a new start, but I had a tiny start. And then last night, I had time to work on it, so I did some more. There we go. There are the stitches that I've got so far. So you can see, oh, that's hard to see against. Let's try this. There we go, that's better. Um, this would be his face. The holes are where his rosy cheeks go. We've got his hair. Um, he's holding a bit of an axe here, some beads go in there, and then he's got a cape that comes down here, and his feet, and he's standing on a bit of rock and grass here. As always, um, so the Milhill kits come with DMC, but what you get is you get, I can show you this part of the chart, um, you get this list. And it doesn't tell you how many skeins are included of each color. So you kind of have to guess. Sometimes I end up using my regular set of DMC to compare colors. And then what I did, because again, I was at my friend's house and she, or I didn't have my normal tools that I would have to use. I made this very hacked floss sorter. I would never do this for a larger project. Um, I just cut, she drinks coffee, I don't. I just grabbed a bit of cardboard out of the recycling and then I cut slits. And then I put the symbol and the DMC number and just slid the floss in. And it's good enough for a project this short. It's definitely not foolproof. Foolproof, for example, <laughs> there's some that fell out and I have to put them back in, but it's not a big deal. It's such a small project. And I'm wondering with the amount of progress I made yesterday, I'm thinking that I might, this might be a finish, even with the beading, before I'm done with my 10 days, in which case, I'll just use them for my other project. And if I finish both of those early, I've got plenty of other big projects that show up two or more times on my Whipco board to tackle. I might also really be glad I have smaller projects this month 
through luck of the draw because it is report card month. Marks are due in a week and a half, I think. So that always means less time for stitching. And the second whip go call was um, autumn all around. And I'll show you where I'm at with that one. Here is the booklet picture of the finished product. There you go. I chose that one because I love the colors so much. It is fabulously deep, rich colors. And this one, I'm so close to a finish, like so close. I've been stitching it in hand because I didn't want to mess up my stitches at all. And you'll see right away, I have started some of the beading and there's just part of one of the quadrants left to go. So, I also don't like to do back stitching either until the very end or until all the stitches in an area are complete, all the X's. And, but with this design, the motifs are um, distinct. So here's the whole thing. And as you can see, I've done some of the beading up here. I just chose a floss that matched the fabric. This is a cream linen of some kind. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly which linen I used for this. It's been a long time since I started it. There are metallics. I'm sorry, I'm really hoping the rustling doesn't show up too much in the sound. Um, there are metallics here. In these areas, these little teardrop motifs. And then Mill Hill beads in some of the gap spots. Each leaf has three or four DMC shades to it, so you get that gradation. On the bottom, you can see here's a full quarter. So there's a full quadrant like this. You've got these leaves, you've got this greenish one, the two purplish ones, the lighter purple. Those look like oak leaves. So on the bottom, I started this here, I'll move it up. There we go. I started this oak leaf here. It's not quite done. If you compare it to these ones. And then I've got these leaves to fill in. But they're smaller ones. And then there's quite a, well, yeah, most of the beading left to go. I'm still, this variegated thread is a DMC variegated thread. And it is not charted like this. I think it's charted with the metallics. I'm not 100, I'm still not 100% sure I want to keep this. I think I want to switch it to the metallics. But that is an easy fix if I choose to change it. So I haven't done anything with it yet until I've decided for sure. This one I've been stitching in hand. And what I've been doing is I've got this pin here. And so I'll do this part off camera. Never ever put a pin in your mouth, children. What I do is I roll up the bottom until I get to where it is I wanna be stitching. So let's say I'm stitching here. And then I just put this pin in the fabric. Now, yes, there's a risk of poking myself, but what it means is there's less tension on my hand as I try to hold the fabric for stitching. I, I guess you could do that with other clips or something like this. Um, if it were a stiffer fabric, I wouldn't be doing this. And if my hands were in better shape, I wouldn't need to do it either. I'm really looking forward to finishing this and then deciding how I'm going to frame it. I'd love to have a circular frame for this, but I have no idea how much that costs. I assume it's a lot. So there's my autumn all around. So far, I am not regretting or rethinking any of my Whipco picks. Now we're, it's early days. We're only just moving into March. So that might change. But in the meantime, 
that's that. Autumn All Around lives in this project bag. It's got kind of a metallic spatter design on it. And I've got my Prenix as well. I don't know, some people don't like them or don't like to stitch with them. And it's definitely different than stitching with DMC. But I find as long as I keep my lengths quite short, Normally I like to stitch with a thread that I've held here and then cut here. And I keep these ones significantly shorter. That's all the metallics. Um, I don't really have a problem with it. I go slow, I try to make sure, you know, if it starts to snag or loop back on itself to make those knots, catch it early, then it's not a big problem. It's a bit, a bit dark in here. This is the DMC variegated I was telling you about. It's 4122. Beautiful autumn colors. That may or may not end up on the final product. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'd love to hear if you're working on um, any of the same projects or if you're working on anything similar. I'd love to go and see what you're working on as well. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.